Hey everyone, so today I'll be covering my Premier Ultra League line and if you've seen any of my previous Ultra League videos you see that Zangoose makes a lot of appearances and this one will not be that much different. Personally I think Zangoose has one of the best move sets in the game and it also fits really well with my playstyle so I'll talk a little bit more in the video on how it matches up against the meta. So the team is Zangoose, Polyrath, and Venusaur. For Zangoose in particular you definitely want to have close to 100% IVs and the big reason behind that is because it doesn't max out 2500 so if you get best buddy of 100% Zangoose you have the best PvP one for Ultra League. Because Zangus are spawning all over the place for a go fest, hopefully you could lock down one for a lucky trade. And if you were to really give up any of the stats, I would give up the attack stat just because it has such a high attack already. It's probably winning CMP in most situations and it's hitting probably most breakpoints already. Both Polyrath and Venusaur, I ran high stat product ones. And that's mainly because those two provide a lot more bulk to the team that Zangus lacks. Okay, so getting into the matchups, um, a lot of Zangus's matchups is really relying on neutral matchups, and so in this lead scenario against Lapras, the best way to play out is tank the Surf or Ice Beam, and then drop a close combat and a Nice Slash. Uh, my opponent actually swaps out to Gallade right here, and so this is definitely a tough spot for my team because Gallade is actually very strong against both Polyrath and Venusaur. The saving grace for Venusaur here though is that you really resist all the charge moves Galilee throws at you so you don't really need to waste any shields. And the Galilee can't really tank a Frenzy Plant so um, getting to that Frenzy Plant will be huge. Um, I'm assuming that I can survive the Leaf Blade here and I do with a Sliver of Health and I drop the Frenzy Plant. So right now I'm up 2 shields to 0 with Switch Advantage and a Polyrath locked in to uh, Lapras later on. Um, so usually you would stay in the lead for Lapras but um, and if they take you out you just come in and farm down with uh, Polyrath and just land down every punch. Um, but in this scenario, my opponent actually swapped out, so now I could lock in my Polyrath versus the Lapras. And I'm just going to farm up a little bit more energy right here. Um, I'm going to shield the Surf just because I don't want to tank too many of these. And then I'm going to drop another Dynamic Punch. Uh, the big thing with Lapras is it's going to res double resist the Ice Punch with its Water and Ice Typing. So you really can't get away with throwing an Ice Punch. So you should always just keep throwing Dynamic Punches um, unless for some reason they have like a very s small sliver of health. Um, so in this scenario right here, um, I was able to Ice Punch the Gengar, even though it's a strong counter to Polyrath, and then finish it off with Zangoose with a little bit of health left. All right, so Empoleon, um, same situation, except you do have the shield, the charge move. Um, Hydro Cannon is going to hit much harder than a Surf or Ice Beam from Lapras, and then also the Hydro, uh, the Waterfalls are going to add up much faster than Ice Shards do. Um, so I just charge up to two back-to-back -back close combats, and then I throw them at uh, the Empoleon. So I'll either lose lead and uh, be up one shield to zero, or I'll win lead. Um, so Venusaur is definitely... Uh, a tough one for this team as well as Charizard and so if you could catch either in the lead it's great um, but luckily because I had switch advantage I was able to bring in my own Venusaur and force them to bring a Charizard instead of staying in and then this is actually very good uh, for my team because uh, Charizard is a huge issue for Venusaur so if I could get rid of it with Polyrath that's a huge bonus um, so you might wonder why uh, Dynamic Punch over Ice Punch or or the other way around. Uh, so essentially both moves are not that great against Charizard. Ice Punch just isn't the best move, especially with Polyrath because you don't have a uh, stab with it. So same type and uh, same type attack bonus. Um, and then Dynamic Punch, because you have stab, it's going to hit a little harder, but it is resisted. So they both even out to about the same energy efficiency. The big difference really is you want to land Dynamic Punch if you want to land a harder hitting move. Um, but if you think they're going to shield, you should just go for Ice Punch. Um, because uh, at the end of the day, it's going to cost about the same amount of energy to land both um, for the amount of damage they do. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much how you win that matchup. Obviously, having both Venusaur and Charles on the back is not ideal. But um, having that switch advantage is pretty huge. And the big thing here is that Polyrath and Venusaur make up a very strong core that cover each other pretty well overall. Uh, big ones to worry about really are like Confusion users, especially Gallade. Uh, but outside of Gallade, um, there's not too much that breaks up that core. So essentially what I do is try to win switch or try to give myself as big of an advantage as possible um, with Zangoose, uh, especially to take out any big threats that one of them may share in the back. And then I try to sweep with the two in the back. Um, so in this situation, what I do with Venusaur is I stay in. And in that situation, there's still quite a bit of play. It's not like an easy matchup by any means, um, but there's play there. So that's why I decided to stay in. And even if I lose, uh, I could just potentially um, come in, farm up some energy with Venusaur and land a Frenzy Plant and take him out. 
Um, and they have to land the Frenzy Plants as soon as possible against the Zangus. All right, so uh, in this spot, it's not a terrible spot to be in. Um, my opponent does actually come in to potentially try to catch a charge move. I farm up a little bit extra energy right there. Um, and then I still have my Polyrath. I don't know what the third is. So it is actually gonna be a Lapras. Um, so a big concern here is if they have Skull Bash or not. And so if they have Skull Bash, and fortunately they charge this way too quickly for it to be a Skull Bash. Uh, but if it's Skull Bash, it would have taken me out. So I'm gonna charge up a little bit more and then uh, go for another dynamic punch. And then this way I'll get to dynamic punch before they can. Um, and then so this Polyrath essentially just sweeps their entire back line uh, with a little bit of energy advantage and play there. All right, Gengar lead, very favorable uh, for Zangus. So you definitely want to stay in until they swap, obviously. Um, of course, you can always charge up to a close combat and then throw it against Lapras. But personally, I prefer to just expend my Polyrath here because Polyrath does not have a great matchup against Gengar. So might as well just whittle it down to as little health as possible and just tank all these charge moves. And it looks like they're not running Skull Bash. So um, I'm not really in a big fear of uh, tanking anything that's going to hit too hard. Again, it's okay if you tank the charge move. Um, I have two back-to-back -back dynamic punches. So there's unless they decide to double shield this, uh, then there's no way they can win this. And then now I still have a little, a little bit of energy left to keep spamming out these ice punches. And Polyrath is actually very bulky and ultra league. So uh, you're going to actually survive quite a bit, even though this um, uh, Gengar is very attack weighted. Um, so then they come with Machamp. This is a good spot for me to be in. I land the close combat. And this, so this will put the... Uh, Machamp into Vine Whip farm down range, and so I could just farm down with Vine Whips. Obviously, they're going to land the Rock Slide, it's going to hurt a bit. Um, but this next move, I'm just being just going to be a cross job, so it's not going to be too big of a deal. And now I have back to back frenzy plans for this Gengar. Um, and I still have a shield left too, so in case they get to like a Sludge Bomb or something, I can still shield it with my Zangoose and then uh, go for a nice slash or Shadow Claw down. Now, fortunately, that was enough, so I was able to still win that one um, with two shields left. Um, again, Gengar, very favorable lead. Really, you gotta watch out for a Sludge Bomb or Focus Blast. Um, so this is kind of a tough spot to be in. Uh, what I'm going to do is actually throw Nice Slashes against Charizard. Um, again, Charizard is really good against Venusaur in the back. So what I do here is actually soften up the Charizard. Now, no matter what they throw at me, Blast Burn, I can still tank and take out this Charizard. They're already down a shield too, so I'm not too worried. And uh, even another Blast Burn, not a big deal. Um, I have back-to-back -back Ice Punches, so even if they shield the first one, I can take them out with the second one. So they let it go. Um, and then I'm going to go in with another Ice Punch. So they actually bring out Gallade. So Gallade, again, very tough for my backline. Uh, Zangus does actually pretty well with it. So Gallade is not a huge deal, but the thing is Venusaur does not have a great matchup against Gengar. So I'd rather just try to land a Frenzy Plant on the Gallade um, and then maybe save both shields for my Zangus. So I'm not too worried here. I'm just going to tank this Leaf Blade and then try to get to this Frenzy Plant. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to. Um, I'm going to shield. You definitely want to shield everything from Gallade because even the Leaf Blades are going to hurt quite a bit. It's a very attack weighted Pokemon. Shadow Claw down, have a nice slash ready. Uh, the big thing is these Shadow Claws from Gengars are not going to do anything really. And then um, I thought my opponent was lagging for a second, so I stopped for a second, but I think they realized that there's nothing out of they could do in that scenario, so they conceded. Drift Blim. Now, if you thought Gengar was a great lead, Drift Blim even better. Um, Gengar, the big issue is if they charge up to a Sludge Bomb or Focus Blast, you do have the shield. But Zangus here can actually tank two Icy Winds from Drift Blim without shielding. So um, the only scenario they really win is if they invest two shields and you invest zero shield. So they land three Icy Winds. Uh, so I do shield the second one though, just to... Um, you know, make sure that I, I don't give up the vanish too quickly because, um, yeah, it could be a bad spot. But as you can see, the Driplum actually did commit both shields already in that scenario. Um, and like I said, if, if I committed zero shields to their two, then they would have won. Um, okay, so they come in with uh, Tokus, which Venusaur counters, but then they also come in with Bronzon. Bronzon is actually kind of scary for my team because... Um, it does really well if it's not matched as long as it's not matched up against Zangus. And so it's kind of like Galilee, that confusion user uh, is going to do quite well. But um, doing neutral damage with Dominator Punch from Polyrath is going to be very key. And then also Polyrath doesn't have as much play against Tokus as Venusaur does. So able to get this Sludge Bomb right there and take him out. Um, Galilee lead. So Galilee is a great lead to go into. Um, uh, Zangus does beat it, but you will have to shield. So it's not the most comfortable lead, but it's not bad. Um, obviously, you're going to counter switch if they swap out. And so I actually ran into this specific Gallade lead 
with a Snorlax safe swap three times in a row at one point. So it seems like, at, at least at the time, it was a common line that you might expect, and you could just counter uh, uh, counter swap with Poliwrath to really seal up the deal. Um, similar to Lapras, you don't really want to go for the Ice Punch, just go straight dyna Dynamic Punch, because if you land an Ice Punch, that Snorlax actually survives, and then you get another Body Slam off of you, and then you'll be in a bad spot, because um, they could potentially flip that matchup. All right, so again, Zangoose coming in is the best counter for Gallade, so I'm going to uh, just throw these Night Slashes, and I'm going to Shield. Um, Shadow Claw is going to do quite a bit of damage, and then they bring in Empoleon. Um, this is going to be a good spot for me to, to be in. Um, obviously, Friends Plant is only neutral because of Steel subtyping. Um, and then Drill Peck obviously makes Empoleon a much better pick right now. Um, the thing is, even though, as you can see, I get to a Frenzy Plant, I don't want to throw it. The big reason is I don't want this Gallade to farm any extra energy and get off another Leaf Blade. Um, with that extra energy so what i do is actually purposely let my venusaur die and then i'm going to bring in my own zangu so that i can farm up a little extra and get to two nice slashes uh, before they can uh, confusion me down all right fighter leads definitely tricky for this team um venusaur is the best counter for most fighters however um because you can't swap right away to your big uh counter for fighters so i swap in polywrath instead um, I do shield here because now I'm hoping to win switch advantage. Um, I could tank one cross chop, so I'm not too worried here as long as they don't shield this ice punch. Uh, so Marto is a great player from Argentina and uh, he read the situation very well, recognizing that he could take the dynamic punch. Um, and he actually counter swaps to a little muck, <laughs> which is very good against my entire back line. Um, and this actually is probably the big reason why they didn't swap. he didn't swap out right away because he knew that uh, Machamp was going to handle Polyrath, uh, and Polyrath is a huge issue, probably to his backline, and you're going to see a little bit why. So they're going to go for Dark Pulse right here, which is definitely the right call because um, the Snarl damage doesn't really do that much, so landing two Dark Pulses is usually better than landing a Sludge Wave and a Dark Pulse because it just takes more energy, and uh, the two Dark Pulses are energy efficient enough. All right. So he swaps in Lapras, and so as you can see, uh, Polyrath was the biggest threat to his entire backline, so that's why he's stuck in with Machamp for so long, and then he's just going to be able to Ice Charm me down right there. Um, so really well played by him. Um, again, you just got to swap out and just hope that you have stuff that could counter the rest of their line. Um, this non-Shadow Machamp is probably a little bit easier to deal with because it's just not going to hit nearly as hard, and uh, at the end of the day, your charge moves, you're probably going to have to land about just as many too. All right, so they come in with Gengar. So this is uh, not a bad spot for me to be in because this means that I can farm up some energy with my Zangus um, and potentially land a close combat. Um, however, they actually end up just letting their Gengar go. So I don't know if it might've been a misplay, um, but because they already used the shield, I can see why they didn't want to go down two shields to zero. But because of that, I was able to flip switch advantage. So that puts me in a pretty good spot. And like I mentioned before, Venusaur and Polyrath are a really good core team. However, Zangoose with Venusaur is also a pretty solid team because you also have that coverage with uh, close combat. So you have that fighting move to cover some of the things that um, Venusaur might be weak to, but uh, or just not as good against. Um, however, I will say that Polyrath is probably a little better because they can handle the flyers usually a little bit better than um, Zangoose can. Um, but yeah, so at this point, I charge up the two close combats. I'm gonna just land them back and forth. Um, my opponent does a great swap actually to their Machamp. And so this puts me in a tough spot. Um, I am going to have to shield right here because the Spy Slam will put me pretty low. And I'm just gonna go straight for the Frenzy Plant and hopefully come close to taking out this uh, Snorlax. So um, yeah, unfortunately, the, this match is getting a lot closer than I anticipated, but um, ends up uh, still kind of working out. All right, um, yeah, so it would take it out. Uh, Heracross, probably even worse than Machamp just because it resists grass damage. So it's actually pretty solid against Venusaur as well. Um, technically speaking, this Heracross can beat my entire line. So, uh, or has the capability to beat every Pokemon in line. I don't think it's one versus three everything. Uh, so that's why I'm investing in the shield right here and then just going for back-to-back -back dynamic punches even though it's resisted. Um, Might have been better if I just baited with ice punch at that point. But um, So they're super debuffed at this point. Um, so I'm going to try to farm down with Vine Whips with Venusaur. They actually go for a quick swap out. Uh, great play by my opponent right here. Um, yeah, I don't know what to do at this point. Uh, I probably shouldn't have thrown the Frenzy Plant because 
Now, my Zangus doesn't really have a lot of targets, and they actually go for Earthquake, so that really took me off guard. I expected a Body Slam that would have been a little less hard hitting. Um, but yeah, so not great. And then they have a Lapras. So I think maybe if I swapped in Zangus into their Snorlax, it would have been a little bit better of a spot for me to be in. Um, I am going to shield this close combat right here and then just Shadow Claw down uh, and then try to bait out a shield with Night Slash. And let's see if I can, I do. Um, and then unfortunately I wasn't able to get a close combat. I did get to Night Slash. So maybe if I went Night Slash, it would have brought this match a little bit closer, but I don't think it would have been enough. All right, so in this lead scenario, if you have Heracross in the back instead of the front, um, obviously against Lapras, it's a more ideal matchup, so uh, not a big deal for um, for my Zangus. Um, and then they're going to swap into their Venusaur. And again, Venusaur is actually pretty solid against the rest of my line. It goes even with my Venusaur, but it has an energy lead. So I don't really want it to be matched up there. So because they swapped in their Venusaur, Zangus can beat the Venusaur uh, if I match shields. Um, at this point, I decided not to match shields, uh, or not to invest them in my last shield, and I decided to just farm down with my Venusaur. Um, so, they come in with a Heracross, um, and little do they know I have a Polyrath, so that, that's actually even better against their Lapras. And even though Heracross is going to resist this grass damage, it still does quite hard for neutral. And that I'm anticipating this being a Megahorn, so I'm just going to shield it. It's unlikely they'll go for close combat. And I'm now just going to go for a next Frenzy Plan, and then I have the Polyrath that can just wall off this Lapras. And then I assume they'll probably concede the match or just uh, let this Lapras go. Um, yeah, so it's going to do a ton of damage. Even if they land a Skull Bash, they need to land a second one, and I'll definitely get to the second Dynamic Punch before they can get to the second Skull Bash. So Heracross on the back, there are some plays around it. Obviously, I needed a little bit of an energy lead with my Bean Sword to handle it. Um, but in the lead, it's very, very tough. Obscoon again. Uh, it's not really a fighting Pokemon, but it has counter and it operates a lot similarly to fighting Pokemons. And so the big thing with Obscoon that I actually dislike even more than facing Machamps is that most Obscoons um, actually have a Charmer in the back. And the main reason is probably because they want to have a check for any Machamp bleeds and stuff. So having a Charmer in the back is probably pretty solid. And then, you know, they might have a Grass as well that does okay against uh, fighters too. Um, so I'm going to come in with my Venusaur, anticipating that this might be a Psychic. Unfortunately, it's just a Moonblast, so maybe I should have just tanked it. And again, as I mentioned, uh, they got a Grass in the back. So um, this is kind of tough for me because uh, Zanko's not great, especially on an energy disadvantage against uh, Venusaur. And then I just let that go because I'm like, well, there's nothing I could really do <laughs> at this point. Um, maybe what would have been better is maybe shielding and just doing chip damage with my Zangus instead of taking a Frenzy Plant and then letting them farm off me with Vine Whips. Um, but the moment that I saw the Charm hard counter right after my Polyrath swap, um, I knew that this was going to be a very tough match. And then even though Venusaur is good against Obstagoon, um, with this much of a health disparity, there's not much you could do. Um, okay, so uh, if they don't have a Charm in the back though, you definitely have a lot more play. So I noticed that this Obstagoon didn't swap out right away which means they're probably weak to uh, Polyrath them back or just don't have a lot of great answers to it. So they're forced to shield Dynamic Punch, which is puts me in a great spot. Now I'm going to shield their Gunk Shot because I figured it's probably going to be a Gunk Shot at this point. And then they have uh, Charizard. So uh, not the best counter to Polyrath, which makes sense. Um, they did do quite a bit of damage with the counters uh, adding up against my Polyrath, but I actually had a lot of energy stored up too. So now I can really just do quite a bit of damage against this Charizard. Um, my thought was even if they land a Blast Burn, I could just Shadow Claw down the Charizard and then uh, try to land a close combat on the Obscoon. Uh, but fortunately, I was actually able to win back switch advantage, and now I could match up my Venusaur into their Obscoon. Um, so they actually bring in Snorlax instead, so that's fine, because now I'm just going to bring in my uh, Zangus. I'm going to go straight close combat. Um, I'm not too worried if they take me out right away with the Snorlax, uh, just because if it's uh, Superpower, it would debuff them and then if it's body slam I can survive it um, but I was going to farm down with Venusaur so they come in with their Obstagoon um, I believe I don't shield this um, I do survive a gunk shot too so I wasn't too worried and then at this point I realized that they're probably just night slashes so I'm just going to tank them and then these counters aren't going to do too much you definitely don't want to shield the first night slash ever because in case they get a boost that second one's going to hurt a lot more and so you're going to wish you had the shield for that 
At this point, I know I can farm down with Mind Whips and then just go straight for the Frenzy Plant on the Snorlax. They actually swap in their Snorlax right away, um, which, you know, probably to prevent additional farm, but at that point, I was able to handle it. All right, uh, so Toxic Croak, uh, or sorry, Tokus, uh, very tough lead as well. Um, yeah, this is tough, again, because my safe swap is not great against it. And so they're actually farming a bunch of energy off of my uh, Polyrath right here. And so now I have to come in with Venusaur because I can't really take these charms. And then I am forced to shield too because if it's a flamethrower, it's going to do quite a bit of damage. And it is. And then they swap out to their Toxicroak. Um, Toxicroak is also very good against my entire line. Um, it resists grass and poison damage. And it is a much better fight, uh, has a much better matchup against Polyrath. Uh, because it resists fighting damage and it's only taking neutral from Ice Punch, whereas the Sludge Bombs are hurting quite a bit, and um, Polyrath is also not resisting counters, unlike Toxic Rogue is. Um, well, Polyrath doesn't really have any counter damage, so it's not a big deal there, but uh, it does resist fighting damage. And so my opponent is constantly throwing Mud Bombs, which is making me wonder what second move they have, because I would expect a Sludge Bomb on my Venusaur, but it doesn't really matter at this point. They're very far ahead. Um, and I probably should have just gone straight for that Night Slash instead, but it doesn't really matter too much. Um, I'd have to, yeah, maybe it would have made it a little bit closer, but I don't think I was able to farm it down. Yeah, and they could take me out right there. All right, so, um, here comes Zangoose, and then, uh, against Charizard, not a bad spot to be in. Um, the thing is, if they have a Toxic Crook in the back, um, it's not nearly as hard as in the front, like, same thing like Heracross. Um, you know, Pokemon like that in the in the back is a little bit easier to deal with because you can swap in Venusaur. Um, my opponent actually shields right there. Maybe they thought it was a close combat, and resisted close combat still does hurt, especially against Toxic Um So I'm going to let that first charge move go uh, because I know I can survive a Sludge Bomb as well in case they went for that move. Um, and at this point, I just let my Venusaur go. Um, I can farm up some energy with my Polyrath, and these Mud Shots are super effective. Um, even though Mud Shots don't do that much damage, it still is something. And then now I have a lot of energy for that Charizard, as well as anything else in the back. Um, so they actually go for, I don't know, kind of a weird swap with Venusaur, and then bring back Charizard again. So I'm going to just let this go, and now I'm just going to straight Mud Shot farm down this Charizard and get a bunch of energy. So now I'm over uh, two Ice Punches at this point. I'm just going to keep throwing out these Ice Punches and then see what I can do against my opponent right here. They do have a shield, so I get down the first shield, uh, but these Ice Punches still are de start adding up. So I get to another one. I think at this point I swap straight to Zangoose and then try to land a Nice Slash. I'm going to shield right here, but knowing that I get to the Nice Slash right after, I can take out the Venusaur. So uh, fighters like Toxic and Heracross, very tough in the lead, um, but in the back, not so bad. Um, Polyrath, not as nearly as scary because it doesn't have counter damage. Venusaur has a great matchup against it, and then also I have to mirror. Um, before my fighters, um, you know, Polyrath is not a great uh, spot for, um, like, against other fighters because it's usually weaker, but in the mirror, it's fine. All right, so my opponent right here actually brings in a Lolan Muck, um, which is kind of interesting because it usually loses to Polyrath, and so they actually don't shield here. So kind of an interesting play. Not sure uh, what the rationale out there is, but um, but they are gonna win this mirror. And so I'm not too worried about that. I do go for Ice Punch Bait. Let's see if I land it, I don't. So great counting by my opponent, but um, I figured they were gonna get to Ice Dynamic Punch before I could get to one anyway. Um, maybe it would have been better if I just went for Dynamic Punch, because clearly I survived the Dynamic Punch. Um, but at this point, I'm just going to commit to farming down the Polyrath. Um, they already threw out their little muck, so that's one of their grass counters. Um, I'm just wondering, maybe they have a Charizard on the back. It's actually uh, Lapras, so this is actually not too bad. Um, they actually go for the shield. So at this point, I know that I could win this zero shield, and then the one shield scenario, I do have to bait. So I'm going to bait right here and throw a Night Slash first. And then I have close combat ready right after. So they do call, go for the bait, and then now I go for close combat. And then hopefully this one shots it close, but I was able to finish off with one Shadow Claw. And then that's actually not a bad spot for me to uh, take advantage of because now I can get to a nice slash faster. Take out the Polyrath. All right, Charizard lead I actually really enjoy because even though Zangoose doesn't outright beat Charizard, um, there is some play against it. So this Charizard is actually running Wing Attack. And so Wing Attack Charizard, what I notice is if they go for the Blast Burn first, 
they're usually going for the Dragon Claw next. And the big thing with Zangoose, especially if you have a uh, perfect Zangoose as best buddy, um, I know not everyone may have that, so that might not be the best uh, uh, metric for everyone to go by, you could survive a Dragon Claw. So as you can see right there, I played out the scenario a few times. If they go Blast Burn first, which a lot of them do, you can survive the Dragon Claw afterward and land a nice slash and then force them into two shields. Because at that point, you can actually win the one shield scenario. Um, so uh, I'm committed to just farming down with uh, my Polyrath right here. I go for a Dynamic Punch, but what I should have done is just swap straight away to Venusaur. Um, but they have their own op opposing Venusaur. So this is not bad because that Ampharos probably isn't going to have anything that could deal um, anything beyond resisted damage unless they're running Dragon Pulse. Um, but Focus Blast and uh, Thunder Punch are going to be resisted. And so I just have to take out this Venusaur and I'll be okay. And so I still have a shield left too and just have to land the Frenzy Plant and take it out. Um, big thing with Charizard is it's a big threat to Venusaur on the back. So once I take it out, um, it's unlikely they have another flyer as well. Um, if they do, it might be something like a Gyarados, but um, otherwise, you know, they would just really struggle against any Lapras leads. Um, so this Charizard is running uh, Fire Spin, and Fire Spin does do a little bit more damage than Wing Attack does, so you definitely have to watch out for it. Um, I generally only commit one shield and force the Charizard into a really low um, health range. And uh, so at this point, I'm going to just take the Blast Burn. Um, surprised they went for Blast Burn because I, I guess maybe they just want to make sure they can take me out instead of landing uh, Dragon Claw. Um, but I'm going to quickly come in with my Polyrath and take it out. Again, because Charizard is such a threat to the rest of my line, taking that out usually makes my matchups a little bit easier. Um, but they have Switch Advantage. And now they have uh, a Venusaur against my Polyrath and then my Venusaur against their Lapras. It's not a bad spot for my Venusaur to be in because it doesn't have a terrible matchup against Lapras unless it's Ice Beam, and this one does. But uh, what I recognize is once they have Ice Beam, they're unlikely running Skull Bash and Ice Beam. So as you can see, they're running Surf. So I'm just gonna farm down with Mud Shots, just get a bunch of energy and unload on this Venusaur. Um, they do have uh, still another shield and they have a Charge Move ready. So I have to get the two dynamic uh, Ice Punches before they can get to their next Frenzy plan. And I figured with the energy advantage I have, I figured this is probably likely and I was able to finish it off. So definitely a close match right there, um, but taking advantage of that uh, Lapras' Ice Beam over Skull Bash uh, definitely helped there. All right, Magnetome, kind of a tough lead. So you'll get to close combat the same time they get to Wild Charge. I usually shield the Wild Charge and then they often swap out. And so because they swapped out there, I'm going to bring in my Polyrath. And Polyrath is okay against Gyarados, I guess. Uh, but you really, I really want to save the Venusaur on the back for the Magnuson in case I match up with it. Because Zangus doesn't have the best matchup. You don't really want to take a Wild Charge by any means. Um, and as you can see, I'm going for both Dynamic Punch and Ice Punch. Same thing, same principle as against Charizard. Um, they both do about the same energy efficiency, but Dynamic Punch is just a harder hitting move. All right, so I am able to win Switch Advantage back, so that's nice. Um, and then now they come in Magnuson, I bring in my Venusaur, and then I could usually take anything that they throw at me, unless it's a Flash Cannon, that's gonna hurt a bit. Uh, but they throw a Wild Charge instead, so um, my guess is they're probably running Mirror Shot uh, with Wild Charge. And they let that go, and then now they bring in Dragonite. Zangoose with Energy and a Shield Advantage against Dragonite. Actually, no, I don't even have a Shield Advantage. They have a Shield Advantage on me. Zangoose still hits really hard with that Energy build up. Um, so I actually have to give a shout out to House Stark because he ran the same exact line before I played this match and I lost to him. And the big difference um, why I lost that one versus this one is that uh, when that Gyarados came in, um, I threw energy on my Zangoose instead of swapping straight to Polyrath. Having that stored energy against a Dragonite in the back or whatever in the back can really help. Unless they have like a, I don't know, if they have a Charmer in the back or something, then your Venus are gonna take care of it. But um, otherwise you'll want that extra energy on your Zangoose. All right, Dragonite against Zangoose, especially Dra Shadow Dragonite, uh, it's a lot closer than you think. And the big reason is because Zangoose gets to a Night Slash before the Dragonite can get to a Dragon Claw. So they need a shield in, in order to win this matchup, and my opponent actually lets it go. Um, I get a boost there, so that's actually pretty big. And then it's gonna be a Lapras. I'm gonna go straight close combat. Uh, no need to bait here, because I'm gonna be taken out anyway. And uh, the smart play is for them to shield, so they do. Um, but now I come in Polyrath. So I really don't mind uh, having this matchup at all when Lapras comes in because I know that I'll be paired up in a good spot after this. I'm gonna charge up a lot of extra energy just to be safe um, uh, in case they don't shield. They do shield and so I'm just go, go, going to go for another Dynamic Punch 
and then they're probably going to land another Skull Bash. So I'm just going to let this go at this point um, because uh, they actually went for a Surf. So um, <laughs> yeah, so kind of good for me. Um, but they go for a double surf, um, so that could take me out. And I was okay coming out with a shield advantage, because shield advantage with Venusaur is usually a good spot to be in, especially because they led with Dragonite, so they probably don't have a flyer in the back. Um, if it was Charizard, it would definitely be a little bit tough. I had to go double Sludge Bomb, but fortunately, it's actually a Snorlax, um, and so Venusaur can take it out with two Frenzy Plants, and that could just farm down with Vine Whips there. All right, uh, Kingdra. Kind of a dragon type that's been picking up a little bit in Steam lately. And what I usually do is I stay in with Zangoose, throw close combat, then I bail out to Polyrath. Um, Polyrath can really tank all these charge moves. Octazooka definitely could tank, but even Outrage is not too bad. And so they go straight for Outrage. Obviously, it does a ton of damage against me. Um, but uh, I still have a lot of energy to dump on this Ampharos. And so hoping to uh, try to get out. Let's see if my opponent goes for the bait or not. And they don't. So uh, great call by them. Uh, I'm going to bring in my Venusaur, farm up a bunch of energy off of this Ampharos. Uh, don't really need to throw a charge move. And then Venusaur actually does okay against uh, Kingdra as well because it is taking neutral damage. Um, and it's actually going to be a Venusaur themselves. Uh, they're bringing in their own Venusaur. This is actually really good for me because um, obviously my Venusaur has a much better matchup. Um, but I actually bring in my Zangus right here just to sacrifice it, take away the energy from the Venusaur. And then now I'm going to just throw Sludge Bombs. I have a shield advantage. And then this Kingdra is probably close to being taken out with one Frenzy Plant. So I'm going to shield. It's going to be another Frenzy Plant bait, uh, but that's fine. And then they bring in their Kingdra. Um, I have two Frenzy Plants charged up. So in case they shield, I have another one I could drop on them. Um, and then they don't actually shield. So, oh, actually they're out of shields. So I'm going to just throw another Frenzy Plant. And then um, even though I'm low on health, I know that Venusaur's Vine Whips are going to be super resisted by my own. And so um, even with that silver health, I can get to the next charge move. I hope you enjoyed that footage and the team I use. I know that Zangoose is not the easiest Pokemon to acquire, but if you have some lucky trades lined up, hopefully you can get one that you can use. Personally, I really enjoy using it. I think it's a lot of fun, but there are definitely hard counters to it, especially fighting types and charmers in the lead. So definitely something to think about if the meta is shifting towards a lot of fighters or charmers in the lead, maybe this is not the best time to use the team. It is also a very skill heavy team, so it'll take a lot of practice, but hopefully seeing all these different matchups will help make that process a little bit easier. A big shout out Thank you to all of my patrons. I've had people ask if I live stream or not. And I do live stream, but I actually only live stream for my patrons. So if you would like to see any live streams, you can definitely check out the link down below. Also, if you've been enjoying the background music to this video, be sure to check out Tom Mora. He was kind enough to let me use his music for some of my videos. So definitely show him some love by visiting some of his socials in the description below. I've linked to Spotify, SoundCloud, and different social media accounts so that you can keep up with his latest music. As always, thank you all for watching. If you like this video, feel free to give it a like and share subscribe for future content hit that notification bell to get alerted right when i post a new video and i'll see y'all next time